something that people either love or really hate about Reaper is that the MIDI editor sometimes feels like it's a totally different program. And you may have even noticed that when your MIDI editor window is in focus, if you look at the top of your screen, you will see a whole new set of options up here, as opposed to when the arrange view is focused and you see this stuff. Everything we're gonna cover today lives under the options tab up here. You can also find all of them in the actions list if you go to the MIDI editor section and search for options, and you can set hotkeys to them, add them to toolbars, whatever floats your boat. Now, if you are using a screen set where your MIDI editor is docked, like I do right here, then you'll notice that clicking on the MIDI editor window does focus that window, but you won't see these options pop up up there. So the way to access these is by going over to this kind of gray area above your piano roll and right clicking, and then here you can find them in the options tab. So there's a lot of cool stuff here. Today I'm gonna to show you five. As always, I encourage you to go and check out the rest yourself, but let's... So the first thing I wanna show you is sync editor transport to project transport, and that will, <laughs> we'll take a guess. So with this option off, your arrange view and MIDI editor move independently from each other. So your edit cursor will always be in the same place. But for example, if I zoom in on my arrange view or in the MIDI editor, the other window stays where it is. And the same thing applies to scrolling. So for example, if I'm in a range view and I click somewhere to edit some notes, the MIDI editor will open, but it may just be somewhere else. It may be really zoomed in, so you'd have to kind of zoom out and scroll around to find the same spot, and that gets a little bit annoying. So if you go to options and put a little tick on that box, they will sync up. So when I scroll on either side, the other side scrolls with it. I can also zoom and it will just respect the same zoom settings. So whenever I click anywhere on my range view, it'll be on the exact same spot in the MIDI editor with the same zoom amount. A lot less confusing in my opinion. And right below that, we have this other option with which you can sync up the grid divisions between your range view and your MIDI editor. And I actually like this option off, but you know, you do you. So let's get to number two. Chase MIDI notes on during playback. Okay, so I got a track here with an arpeggiated synth on it. And right now, if I start playing the item from this spot, we're not gonna hear anything. Then we get to bar two and we are now hearing the bottom two notes, but still not hearing the top two. So this could be fine, but where it kind of gets annoying is, for example, if I'm hearing this while editing another instrument, you know, like drums, well, as I edit my drums, I want to hear the other lines regardless of where I hit play, right? I also want to hear the longer notes when I get to measure two, because otherwise it's gonna be missing these two notes. So if you want notes played from the middle, you gotta to go to options and enable chase MIDI note ons during playback. And now when I hit play, I immediately hear like every MIDI notes that kind of crosses my edit cursor. So why is this and why is this option off by default? I hear nobody asking. So I'm gonna go on a slight tangent and explain why this is. But if you're sitting there going, hey man, I don't care, I'm not a nerd, then, you know, feel free to skip to the next chapter. All right, so now the cool kids are gone, let's get into this a little bit. So the reason that by default, we hear no sound when we play MIDI notes from the middle goes all the way back to when MIDI technology itself was being designed. Regardless of what DAW or synth or VSTI that you're using, each MIDI note is made up of two messages. So when you first play or write a note, there's a MIDI note on message that's sent. So here we got this D sharp note and each note carries three bits of information. So we got the note value, which for D sharp two is 51, as you can see on this corner right here. It also has a velocity value, in this case 94, out of 127, so that's pretty forte. And it also has a channel number, which by default is one. So the MIDI note on message tells the VSTI, play whatever sound is assigned to note value 51, play that with a velocity of 94, and send that note to channel one. Then when you release a key or when the note ends in the editor, another message called MIDI note off will be sent. So this message will have the same note value of 51 and the same channel number of one, but the velocity of this second note off message is set to zero. So that communicates to whatever comes after that this note is over. So the duration of each note is dictated by the distance between the MIDI note on and the MIDI note off message for each note. So while most DAWs, including Reaper, will display note events as kind of like a block with a length, in this case, two whole measures, in reality, nothing is contained in the middle of this block. It's just there for us to better visually make sense of what's written. 
So when you play a note from the middle, well, the MIDI note on message was never sent. It's all the way back here. And at the end, there will be a MIDI note off message, which if there was a MIDI note on message would cut that note off. But on its own, it's essentially a note being played with a velocity of zero, which is nothing at all. So when you enable MIDI chase, what happens then is that Reaper looks at where the edit cursor is and it will look at MIDI note on messages that come before it, but the MIDI note off goes after. And if it finds any, it will send those MIDI note on messages at the moment that we start playback. All right, spiel over, let's get to number three right after these messages. Okay, so the next group of options are down here in note preview. This one you may wanna set up a hotkey for, because most of the time it's super useful, but every once in a while I do like it off. So when this top option is on, if you click on an existing note or even on an empty area, you hear what that note sounds like. Also, when I click and create a note or drag it around, we're hearing all that stuff. Where this gets annoying is when you say are uh, transposing a big passage or just moving a big passage kind of over. In those cases, you may be hearing like a hundred notes played together. And first of all, it sounds really loud and it's just kind of like confusing garbage that doesn't really give me any useful information. So in those moments, I just turn it off with my hotkey, which is command option shift and P. And there are also some extra options in the same section that give you more control over what you want to preview and what you don't want to preview. So for example, when I change velocity on a note, you keep hearing the same note kind of machine gunning, right? But if I go and disable preview on velocity change, that won't happen. We still get a preview on notes that we do click on, but not like a hundred times when we're changing velocity. The next two options I always keep on, especially the bottom one is kind of genius. It will also preview every note that overlaps the note being edited. So when you're editing chord voicings, for example, you get to hear the whole chord. Pretty neat. Let's move on to number four. Allow MIDI edit to extend the media item. So this one is again, totally self-explanatory, but it is off by default, I think. Don't, don't quote me on that. And that means if I create a note here, when I get to the end, that's it. If I want to extend the item, either I need to do it from the arrange view. If it's looped, I'd have to drag this green line to extend this actual range. And also if I'm copying this stuff from an earlier passage and the passage is longer than the item, then that kind of breaks stuff. And especially if you don't notice, it can get really confusing and weird. So if you go to options and turn this on, now I can extend the note and the item that it's on is extended with it. Nice and easy. On a related note, if you go to preferences, editing behavior and MIDI editor, there's also this option down here, double click outside the bounds of any media item to extend the nearest media item. So if I turn that on, I can also double click in this empty area and just extend my item that way. Super nice, set it, forget it. Don't even mention it to anybody. And last but not least, number five. Okay, so I gotta admit that I'm cheating a little bit because this last option is not under options, but under view. I had to get to five because, hey, let's face it, nobody's clicking on a top four video. So anyway, under view, you have this submenu called show slash hide note rows. And of course, by default, we're showing all note rows. But you can, for example, hide unused and unnamed note rows, which is awesome for drum editing, where you may not have sounds assigned to every single key. Clicking on this will save space and kind of declutter your whole, uh, situation. And by the way, since these options are a couple of submenus deep, and that's kind of annoying, I've also added these to my MIDI toolbar amongst lots of other things. So I got this one, which is a default. This one is hide unused note rows. So I only see rows that have notes on them and then unused and unnamed that we covered before. There's also a more recently added option here called show custom note row view which allows you to basically select what is shown, what is hidden, and even the order of your note rows, which is not something you could do before. So in this mode, I can hold command on Mac or control on PC, and I can drag any note row anywhere I want. So maybe I can grab all my hi-hats and put them next to each other. Maybe all my toms next to each other. And also by command option and clicking, you can remove any note row that you want. So maybe I can delete these rows on the bottom, basically choose to show what I want. Maybe I'm not using some of these top notes there, even though they're named. 
So basically you get your own custom view mode where the order may not even follow the regular order of note rows and you just show and hide what you want, super awesome. Now these custom note rows are saved with the track. So if I go to another track, as you can see, it has its own view mode that's right now been untouched. But if I go back to my drums, it just looks how I left it. So I wish there was a way to kind of copy this and you know save it for later use or on other tracks. But I don't know if there is, so let me know in the comments if you do. But in any event, you can save this track as a track template and this custom note row will be saved with that so you can use it later. It's a newer feature, so I'm sure it will get some more love in the upcoming updates. But for now, really cool and welcome addition to the MIDI editor, which some people may not know about. So, all right, that's five. I hope you found these useful. You may have noticed that there are a lot fewer episodes these days because Papa got to get that bread. You know, of course I wish I could, you know, do YouTube full time. And if you do want to support me towards that goal, you can become a member here on YouTube or make one-time contributions to the channel through buymeatcoffee.com. All the links will be in the description and you'll also get access to some exclusive material, including mix breakdowns of famous songs. Ooh. And also check out this video if you want to see all the stuff I have in my MIDI toolbar, which is a lot of stuff. So that's it. Adios muchachos. Mm -hmm.